It's been chaotic ever since I got the book, and now that it's been stolen twice, and I was shot, it seems like George had won. But I have people helping me. Emily, the blonde nurse with freckles and glosses, who had been researching the book for years, along with her two disciples, one of them a tan, brown-haired girl, who was in her early thirties, and the other, a slim, dark-skinned guy, who always had a book in his hand. He seemed to be in his early twenties, and seemed eager to learn about the book much more than the brown-haired girl. I rested on the couch for a moment, taking in the situation, when suddenly I heard the living room door open. Me, Emily and her two helpers turned to the living room door to see the clone of George Rintoro staring at us. Chloe! The gun! Emily shouted. Chloe, one of the robed helpers, sprinted towards a gun on the table as George's clone ran towards us. As Chloe grabbed the gun, she swiftly turned and shot the clone three times in the chest, but he didn't stop getting closer. I was barely able to get off the couch as the clone grabbed at me, Emily and the other robed helper, holding George off. What the hell are we supposed to do with this thing? Emily yelled. Throw it in the basement, I said. Emily raised her eyebrows, looking at me. What? It's just a clone? I shrugged. Emily rolled her eyes, but obliged, and with the two helpers, she managed to trap George's clone in the basement. He banged on the door for a while, but eventually stopped. We can't stay here, the other robed helper said. Why's that? Chloe objected. There are tons of eggs that didn't hatch that are in the living room, and we got to get the book back before... The robed helper was cut off as a shockwave blasted everyone backwards. What the fuck? Emily said, staring outside. What is it? I asked, carefully getting up and looking out of the window. We stared in shock as the sky seemed to turn a dark grey. Chloe quickly turned on her phone and looked at the news, appalled to see that nobody was talking about this. I don't understand. How is this not front page news? Chloe asked us. Emily turned white as snow as she stared at the sky. Emily, you know about the book more than anyone. What's going on? The other robed helper asked. Cody, you saw where George went, right? Emily asked. Yeah, north of here. Why? He asked, clearly confused. The book, if opened by the Chosen One, makes the user a god, Emily stated. But I'm not dead, I interjected. That's the problem, Kyle. Most people open the book once and go insane after even glancing at it. And you saw how the book produced tendrils, even though it was closed. Do you know how strong this book can become when fully opened? I... I don't know how George managed to. He should have gone totally insane, Emily rambled. Wait, what stopped the others from just keeping the book open? I asked. The book doesn't just open itself to anyone who's insane, Emily said, as if stating the obvious. If you really need all the info, read this, she said, shoving a large book out from inside her cloak and thrusting it into my arms. I put the book down as Chloe looked fearful and went to ask Emily another question. Emily, you said... You said that the book can become very powerful. How powerful? Chloe asked fearfully. Emily sighed before responding. Nobody outside this city can see what's going on. That's how powerful it is, she concluded. But can't people just enter the city and find out? She asked. No, because anyone outside can only interact with the illusion. It's basically a fake city, Cody interjected. So nobody knows, Chloe started. Nobody knows that anything is wrong in the city, and there's no way for them to find out if anything is wrong, I finished. Okay, now that we've discussed how we are trapped in the city, we need to find George, Cody stated. Cody, take a look outside! You think I'm walking out there? Chloe asked hysterically. Cody peeked outside to see lampposts floating in the air, as well as many other bizarre things. We have no choice, he said in a determined tone. Fine! You three can go and get yourselves killed. Tell me when it's over, she said, not budging. If you stay here, George's clones could hatch and attack you, Emily said, pointing out the obvious. They aren't after me, they're after you, Chloe said, pointing at me with her pointer finger. I stared at her angrily and held back from slapping her in the face. This was not a good time for arguments. Fine, you can stay here, I said. 
You won't stay with me? She asked. What do you mean? I asked, confused about what she meant. You're hurt. You can't seriously be going out there. You'll be a liability, she argued. I can handle it, I said, gritting my teeth. Shortly after, we began packing up any supplies we had. Emily and Cody took a bark pack, and since there were only two bags, it made sense that the injured one didn't have to carry anything. Our bags consisted mostly of food and medical supplies, along with George's gun and the sharpest kitchen knives I had. You can't stop us, a voice whispered in my head. It's been a while since you talked, George, I responded. The others looked at me confused, but I didn't notice them. I should have made sure you died, but I guess you're already killing yourself anyway, the voice said mockingly. We'll stop you, I said angrily. The voice didn't respond. Who are you talking to? Cody asked. George. George! Me and Emily said, in unison. Jinx! Emily said quickly. What? Hey! Now's not the time for jokes! I yelled. You owe me a drink! Emily said, grinning. I sighed, but let it slide. Sometimes it's good to have a joke every once in a while, even if it is during something as crazy as this. As we approached the front door, I took one last look at Chloe, who was watching TV. I was surprised the city starred some kind of internet, but sadly, it seems we have another enemy at hand. People in the city have been trying to tell others online about what's happening here, but the government was quick to shut it all down before anyone else saw it. Hopefully they don't find out about these posts, or maybe they don't care, since people probably won't believe me anyway. I quickly typed this up as we opened the front door and headed into the unknown. I'll respond soon. Hopefully.